What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Team Home Circus live video. It's on the left side here. We have Melodius going up against Brandon Despia on the right. Before we dive in, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to the channel a lot. We are going to be seeing the Melodius player win the die roll here, choosing to go first. And we're going to be seeing a Ostinato being activated as the first option here. You know, being the Brandon Fusion of the deck, absolutely crazy. Uh, being able to send the copy of Refrain alongside the copy of Soprano, going for the copy of Bacha. Bacha was able to activate its effects to summon out the copy of most likely the level 7, the Shapina from the deck, which can then add back the copy of the Refrain to normal summon it out. Uh, and then we can then normal summon out the copy of Refrain, search for the copy of Cuplet here, which can then summon out the copy of Soprano um, from the graveyard. Which we're going to be activating the effect, summoning it out here. Playing in the zones correctly, we have the couplet effect that we can activate to let us search for the copy of the uh, Concerto. But we already have the Concerto here as well. Um, so we're going to activate the effect using all three to go for that copy of the Etoile. And this is going to be on the fifth summon as well. And making it so the Concerto is in the graveyard as well. So when we get able to fuse with the uh, Bacha, we will be that Concerto draw as well. We're going to activate the effect of Refrain to dump most likely the copy of Aria. I suppose we could also go for... We can either go for the Aria or we can go for the Cannon here. If we wanted to go for a different line, we could go for... Um, the second Bacha if we wanted to and then go for, or we could leave the Bacha on the field go for the copy of Baguska if we knew where our, play, our opponent was playing on the copy of um, of Branded, but we're going to be able to um, draw off Concerto and then we're going to be seeing Bacha summon up the copy of Soprano Soprano is going to be adding back the copy of Refrain we're then going to act for the effect of the couplet to search for the copy of Concerto for the next turn a very nice, and we still have a Pendulum Summon if we wanted to as well here so we could Pendulum Summon out the copy of the area as well as the copy of the Concerto then we're going to be able to fuse with Concerto into a copy of we can go for a Nether Shapina or a Baka here Going for another of the triple DD Crow. We have one set, and that's just going to be a pass turn on us. Um, so being able to have a six DD Crow and then a bounce. Um, so having 12 DD Crows, essentially, if we need to be um, quite nice. And then our cards can't be destroyed by battle, nor be targeted here. And now we don't really know what we are playing on the right side. So there might be a world where we just scoop it up and knowing that we can't win. Um, you know, being able to six DD Crow is essentially going to be just taking our game. Um, right up away, making it so that we never essentially have uh, like those cards that we need in the graveyard. We're going to be seeing Lubellion going to be activating, and now it is kind of too late. They now know what we are playing. Going to be able to search for a copy of Sorinir. Now, we do have a pretty decent Sorinir target as the Shapina in the graveyard, the level 7, if I'm mistaken the name. Because we already have one Soprano in the graveyard, and they know we played two of it, therefore the other one in the hand, which I guess no, both of them are in the graveyard. We're going to go Soranir on the level 7. And so this is going to let it set up so we have Branded lost. Um, they, they are thinking about if they want to banish. Uh, they could very well banish it themselves, making that Soranir stay in the hand. Um, but if that was the case, then they could just discard it, get the additional effect. We are going to be seeing them banish it there. Uh, I don't know if I would do that myself. Essentially, letting them have a free discard off this or a free discard off like an opening. We're going to be seeing fusion deployment, or even here a fusion material as well. And we see them reveal. Most likely a copy of uh, Albaz to summon. Now it could be Cartesia if we wanted to, but no, we're going to go for the Albaz. And then Albaz will be able to discard the copy of Sorinir if we wanted it to be. Um, again, letting us get that. And we do have a Veiler for that. That's crazy. So we have a call by the grave for it. And 
Do we have a second Valor in the hand? We're reading the Call of the Grave very carefully. So they have a second copy of Valor there. They're going to go Sword in your effect, going to be dumping most likely that copy of Retribution. Which finally got an upgrade as an Ultra in the last Battle of Legend set. Quite nice. We're going to be seeing a normal summon of an Aluber here. And unless it's an Imperm, it's probably going to be fine. You know, two cards left in our opponent's hand. We have another triple DD Crow and a Bounce. And it is an Imperm. Oh my lords. But do we have the Branded Fusion? If we still have Branded Fusion in the hand, which I do see the card... You know, we will be still be able to play. We do have the Branded Fusion, and they don't have an Ash for this. But, like, <laughs> it's going to be quite difficult when they go, for example, into an Albion or a Copy of Lubellion, discarding the card, and they Etoile bounces back. Um, and, like, they're not going to be able to get into a Mirror Jade very easily. Uh Unless the Melodious player doesn't really play it correctly. We know the last card in hand, Concerto, as well. Yes, yeah, so I should mention that. Um, we're going to go for a Cartesia alongside Albaz, going for that copy of Albion. We're going to activate the Albion effect, and we most likely should chain a Toile alongside the copy of the Shapina there, banishing the Albaz, um, banishing the Albaz, Cartesia, and Retribution. And that way we bounce back, leaving them with just an Aluber if they have, uh, I guess that'd make them go into Lubellion there, but that's kind of fine, because then you're making them lose all their cards just to put back Lubellion and the Albaz. We see them put back the copy of uh, I mean I'd put back the retribution myself. Um, I mean we are gonna get to banish more cards here during the next turn anyways. But like now they just have the discard off of I mean I suppose regardless you're gonna be banishing them. But now they have to make a copy of Lubellion and they have to discard. Um, making them essentially on zero cards here. But we're going to be discarding the copy of Fusion Duplication. That's huge. Be able to discard that. And they have to put back the Alabaz on itself to go for a copy of the Mirror Jade. And like at that point, you're still going to be losing because Mirror Jade can go end phase, send um, to banish the copy of Etoile. But Etoile, and like you're going to be able to set up. I mean, you don't even set up Brandon Red there. You, you kind of have to set up branded opening, opening add back, or opening gets set, or you add opening and then retribution banish to add the copy of Al of branded fusion. You discard it off branded fusion, dump a quem, or summon out quem, quem dump albaz, and you don't have another card in the hand, so quem has to dump a copy of the Cartesia, and like, you're still not winning there, so we just see them scoop it up. I mean, I definitely think that the retribution should have been banished over that copy of. Um, the Sornir. Now, the reason why they did that is because then making their opponent have to have another card in the hand, you know, for a dark um, or a light there to go for another copy of something. But the, the chances of them doing that is going to be very low. Um, they didn't want them to banish the, the Sornir from the graveyard um, and then leaving that copy of Alec Aluber there for the free discard. Uh, now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe you have to banish the target that you do use off of the trap. Um, so even if they would have done that, they would have been able to, uh, to still, yeah. So target one in the graveyard, banish that spell, then apply. So I guess it, it resolves as much as it can, I think. Um, so I could be mistaken. I, I, I really got to learn my, our rulings. But we're going to be seeing them dive on into game two here with Brandon going first. You know, Melodius is able to very easily deal with the Brandon board. 
going first, especially with a double Veiler and an Imperm set. You know, triple DD Crow is huge, but we see Lubelion starting off once again, opening up Lubelion two times in a row here, searching for that Soranir, but it is a nice discard, which we are going to be able to activate the cut of Fusion, revealing the copy of Cartesia this time, or Grangan also with the copy of Cartesia. Uh, very interesting that we see two cards of the exact same in the hand, but this time they're facing up against a, a zero board. Um, going to be able to essentially have a nice board presence, going to do their full combo that we're going to be able to do last turn, um, which is already mapped out in their head. Now they do have a copy of Talents in the hand as well, so if our opponent does hit them with a copy of something nice, they will be able to potentially rip or see multiple cards. We see them use the Cartesia with the copy of Soranir. Going up to the copy of Granganol, we're going to go Granganol 1, Soranir 2, being able to dump a copy of Retribution alongside a potential Albion from the extra deck if we don't have a copy of Brand of Fusion. Or going for a copy of the Gennet Puppet from the main deck. We're going to see that Retribution alongside the Albion being dumped. Uh, so we need access to Branded Fusion or Branded Opening in this case. We're going to dump the Branded Fusion and then we're going to see the Albion being put to the bottom of the deck. We're going to banish the Retribution to add back the uh, Branded Fusion. We're going to activate the Branded Fusion here, and we're going to be seeing no response, or they're thinking. No response here, so we're going to see Albaz alongside the copy of... Now, we already went through Lubelion, so we could potentially... And we have Cartesia in the graveyard already. So we're going to go Alb Albaz as well as a Cartesia again. Um, this is going to be able to let us, if we do summon with a Quem, being able to bring it out as well. Albion effect is going to activate, and we're going to be seeing them banish the Albaz alongside nothing, because we're going to hit them with a Veiler. A well-timed Veiler is quite nice. And we do have the talents to rip the hand. We see Osnato, Herald, Couplet, and a first movement solo. Talk about a baller hand. Wow. I mean, we have to essentially hit the Ostinato, but if we do hit the Ostinato first movement solo, it's going to still get them a, re, uh, a refrain, and then that's just still going to be power to the game. But Ostinato is huge, hitting the Herald instead. I mean, I guess that's going to leave them with one dead card in the hand. They have to either choose the Ostinato or the copy of first movement, we see them tag out for Lubelion. Lubelion's going to activate its effects. And I'm honestly amazed that they lasted this long without activating Herald. Like we still have Branded in red. It's going to be able to be set off the Albion. We still have Cartier going to be able to add back. And is that an opening as well? We do see, and the Dear Servant being played. Dumping the Garua, letting us search for a Maximus. Now, this could be a one-card gaming puppet as well, if we're going to be activating the effect here. Being able to search, and we add a copy of... I didn't see what we got to draw off it here. We're then going to be banishing the Garua off the Maximus, and then Maximus will be able to activate its effect, sending, and we probably are sending the Lulu Walleth, which I see in their hand, um, alongside the... I think it's Titanic Lad there, so something like a Quem and then an Albaz. They're going to send the Bacha and a Hazard Ligaros here. Then we're going to go Thrust as well. Being able to set the copy of either D-Barrier or Fusion Duplication. Now we can just go in the draw phase to go up. They're, yeah, they're thinking about the, the Fusion uh, or D-Barrier there, but they choose for the Fusion dupe instead, being able to copy branded fusion is quite nice. Now we're going to be seeing Cartesia add back. Then we're going to be seeing the Brandon Red being set off the copy of Albion. And we see the Quam, or we see. Despian summon out the copy of Carti or Quem here. Quem can then dump the copy of opening. 
just a protection there, which is quite nice. And kind of like a deck thin. And then we're going to be seeing Titanclad add the Albaz to the hand, which is also very nice. And with that, I think we just passed turn. We don't have anything else to activate. And so now we know we have Couplet, brand, uh, Branded Fusion essentially, and they have the Fusion dupe in the draw phase being able to banish the copy of the Branded Fusion here. And we're going to be dumping a copy of Albaz and Gimmick Puppet for a Lubellion. Lubellion effects going to activate there. Discarding a copy of Fusion Deployment. And we're going to be adding a copy of Mercurior off the branded and lost. Right, I forgot they can't respond. I didn't. I can move forward that was on the field. We're going to be putting back the Albaz alongside the copy of Maximus to go up into that copy of Sanctifier here. Sanctifier on the summon can then activate, placing that copy, and this makes perfect sense why we are going to be putting that Herald back when they have this line right available to them. Quite nice. You know, Nadir Servant being a one-card puppet, and that's without even playing the copy of Bufo Syphilis or whatever it's called, being able to dump that copy of Brigade. Um, now, it is, like, Nadir Servant is a one-card branded, well, it is a one-card gaming puppet lock, not including if, like, we can just activate Nadir Servant and gaming puppet lock them. But if we already have activated branded fusion as well and done some lines like we see there with the Garanganol being able to dump stuff, then it is also a one card fusion lock or puppet lock without having to play those two additional bricks and getting that additional draw off the copy of uh, the Garua. Now we see them go into uh, the Garua dump. I wonder if that indicates they are playing also Super Poly in their build as well, which their opponent must be thinking about you know if you're playing a kind of all one card deck and you know you are playing all light fairies are you really worried about getting super polyed and clearing that board you know you will be able to summon another copy of the triple dd crow once it gets leave leaves out the field but in that case you're going to be kind of screwed over but we are diving on into game three with melodious choosing who's going to go first uh Chances are D-Barrier is not going to be seen, you know. We definitely need to leave our fusion effects on the field. Now, with Branded, you can send them just go for a Game of Puppet Lock and then, or just go for Mirror Jade and then banish their cards and then D-Barrier them. But we're going to be seeing a Mirror Branded Fusion going to be activated on the effect of the opponent's side. Ostinato being even better than Branded Fusion, to be honest. Uh... Going for that Baka. Baka is going to be able to activate its effect, summon a copy of the Refrain. Refrain can then add us the Couplet, and then Couplet can then summon up the Shapina. So most likely already having, or, yeah, summon up the, sh the sh uh, Soprano. Shapina is most likely already in the hand. That's why they didn't summon it off the copy of Bacha. But we're going to activate the Couplet. Couplet's going to be able to search for a Concerto, unless it's in our hand. But we're going to be activating the refrain. Refrain can then activate its effects, and we could send the copy of Shapina from the hand. Um, but they also have the <laughs> wow. So something about Melodious that I've mentioned multiple times before is that the deck is only as good as the non-engine that you draw. Uh, the moment you start drawing multiple engine pieces and having multiple of those cards, um, your deck gets significantly weaker because it can just be able to be broken by boards. Now this board in particular can actually end on a copy of Baguska alongside the copy of the Baka and the copy of Etoile, um, which is very good against the branded player unless they open up a copy of, let's say, for example, Forbidden Droplets. Um, but we're going to be seeing them kind of go towards that by when we see the refrains in the copy of Cannon there, and then we're going to be activating the effect to go up into the Etoile. Um, now we're going to get the Concerto draw as well as the copy of... Um, the Bacha summoning out the copy of the ship, uh, the Soprano. But we do have the copy of Dr of Soranir to banish that copy of Soprano, making it so that we cannot add back 
Very, very nice. Now we could Concerto add if we wanted to, which I think they do. And we can Pendulum Summon out the level four that we need, because we can go into this and then we can go the effect to add back that copy of Cannon. Cannon can then summon itself out if we want to. And then we can just overlay. So we do see the line there, being able to add it back, then we can just summon it out. Oh, we do have the Concerto, because we didn't have the Concerto in the hand prior, okay. Then we're gonna see Cannon summon itself out and we can just go for a Baguska. And now we're in quite a good shape. Now we don't have the effect to uh, diffuse going to that triple DD Crow, but um, we are in quite a good shape. You know, Branded being able to deal with Baguska is quite low without those copies of those board breakers being the Forbidden Droplet or a Dark Roller no more. But let's see if they have it what it takes. The only other option is if they're playing Entis, which uh, I don't think they are. Especially by seeing that copy of the uh, cool. the Lulu Walleth in the extra deck. Yeah, Baguska is such a problematic card. I really hope that they ban that card. That card in D-Barrier, I mean, I am a branded player, so maybe I am a little bit biased, but that card's just not fun. It essentially just forces you to play Lynx. We're going to be seeing Branded Fusion going to be activated. Do we have an Ash Blossom? We do have the Ash. Wow. Even through... <laughs> yeah, that's going to be it for the the Branded player. Unless they have a Talents in the hand. Talents could potentially even take the Baguska, but... They'd still have to kind of just deal with a copy of the Bounce. We're going to see Cartesia Normal Summon. Set 2 and... Pass turn. Just kind of wall up. They're going to go a toile. They're going to bounce. Just one. Bouncing that Cartesia back to the hand. Then we're going to be summoning up the copy of it once again during the end phase and drawing for turn. Now, they just want to remove those copies of the walls onto the field. You know, the Sornier being sent to the graveyard is not going to do very much, but they can attempt to go for a game if they wanted to we're going to be seeing the copy of baguska turn to attack position here i assume we're just going to go everything into attack there's really no risk there we're going to be seeing the refrain send to target Sending that copy of the level four. Now we can add back if we wanted to as well. We're going to see them add back the copy of Canon and Turn everything to attack position. They could go Concerto to go right up into a copy of the Triple DD Crow. Um, but they have... Well, I guess they don't really have game yet. If they went to the Triple DD Crow, they would have game. Cannon summon itself out. They want to go up into the Moon. Moon is going to try to pop a back row. I'm just not sure why we're trying to get rid of this back row here. And it is a copy of branded opening. Sending the Cartesia, being able to summon a Quem here. Quem, Quem can dump Albaz as well, which is quite nice. And we're kind of regretting the turn that Baguska in attack position right now. Especially when we haven't even used any effects. Like, we used the uh, the Shapina to add back, but we didn't really necessarily need to do that.
So we have a few options that we can do. I'm just thinking about the options. We can go Concerto to use our monster, um, but they have branded in red in this case. Now we have to kind of chain the copy of... Okay, I guess we don't, but we have to kind of chain it to at this point because if we don't chain it to then um, they'll be able to do... Unless they chain activated Etoile and then they chain branded in red. But like we have to get rid of that Quem. We're gonna see them go for Lubellion. And then Lubellion's gonna have the effect discarding the copy of opening. We're gonna be seeing the Quem target the copy of Cartesia. And they get to continue here, putting back Blue Belly on alongside. Like we should chain the copy of. I guess we can't really chain it because then they just bring out. Er. And then they could go one, two. One Blue Belly on two Quem, three. The copy of what's his face. But. We're going to be seeing them just admit defeat knowing they have kind of like they've lost no matter what they do they're just going to be losing to the like bounce and they have the concerto in the hand so we do see melodius take the win there uh yeah unfortunately brand opening up all engine is not going to be solving that baguska problem baguska is so strong against a branded deck um, but hope you enjoyed watching the video don't forget to like comment if you have some more content like this don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time stay safe peace